Hello everyone, so um, in this video, I'm going to talk about the validity and reliability of qualitative research. Um, currently, I'm a PhD candidate at Monash University. Okay, so um, there are four domains that have been commonly recognized as um, the key domains when it comes to uh, validity and reliability. But um, in the case of a uh, qualitative research people usually use different terminologies to indicate validity and reliability for example um, credibility instead of validity so here are the four criteria that we'll be talking about today uh, credibility which is used instead of validity and then transferability to indicate generalizability, dependability to indicate reliability and conformability to indicate objectivity. Okay, so um, the first things, um, the first criteria is to ensure our qualitative research uh, have the appropriate credibility. So we can do this by doing several, uh, by employing several strategies during our data collection, during our data analysis, and in our reporting P findings. So for the data um, collections, we want to use um, established methods, established methods which indicates that um, you use the methods uh, which has been empirically tested or have been adopted as a reliable method to investigate a phenom phenomenon that you are investigating. The second strategy is to uh, stay, to engage in the data collection over a period of time. Uh, the, like the longer the better. It is called prolonged engagement because uh, by prolonged in in engagement, uh, you have opportunities to uh, become, you know, closer to the contact, to the participants, understand the contextual features that, that, that are important to interpret your findings. Also, um, another thing the researcher should be uh, mindful of is whether you decide to go um, that you want to choose the random sampling or purposive sampling. On those some researchers advocate for the random sampling, but well, again, we're doing qualitative research, so it all depends on the purpose of your study and you, how you make the case for your purposive sampling if it is needed. Another uh, strategy is to utilize tri triangulation. Uh, that means um, employ different recent methods for example, interviews, um, class observations, or you call it field observations, and then reflective journals, and document analysis, and so on. So triangulation is a way to collect data from multiple sources, uh, which you can cross-check with one another, and then enhance the validity of your finding. Also, it's important that we focus on the honesty uh, of the participants, uh, for many reasons, they may not provide the um, the findings um, in the in all honesty, you know. So we can do this by car by you know pointing out that there is no right or wrong answer at the beginning of your interview, and um, they m to make sure that they understand that they don't lose any credibility if you know telling the truth something or even that their weaknesses. Also, um, iterative questioning is also a strategy. That means you keep you keep probing you keep probing into uh, the topics or the area of knowledge that you expect your participants to respond. The reason is because you can dig deeper into uh, the content of what you want the participant to respond what you expect, the type of inf information you expect by, uh, you know, asking 
um, different but related questions you can see how the participant respond to the, the, the phenomenon that you are trying to investigate uh, with richer data and also cross check their consistencies in terms of you know their response now let's come to once you got the data you know you come to the stage of analyzing the data it's important um, for the researcher to reflect on the effectiveness of your data collections um, and then during your data analysis or when you obtained preliminary findings um, it's, it's good for you to debrief your supervisors or your project leaders uh, about the prelim preliminary findings and also gain feedback from peers and from other attending conference it's also a way to gain feedback. Also, member check-in is a very popular method. That means um, there are different ways of doing member check-in. For example, just sending out the transcript of the interview to your participants, or even more, uh, you can report to them about emerging themes from the data that you have to see if the themes actually reflect their thinking and uh, and you know what they actually meant during the interview um, finally you can enhance your credibility uh, in doing research by providing a thick description of uh, the contact and uh, everything related to your findings and also uh, this, is, this is more common when we try to our discussion section that it cross check our results with the previous findings now let's come to the transfer transferability. That means uh, the generalizability of qualitative findings. Um, the first thing we must be we must acknowledge is that there is an ongoing debate. For example, positivist uh, scholars would argue that uh, qualitative research findings are not um, suitable for generalization, something like that. However, there are also debate that um, there's also argument that um, even we are conducting qualitative research, the population is still part of a larger sample, and in a way, it is still generalizable. Um, as long as the the context to be general generalized, uh, the finding are to be generalized, uh, have similarities of with the context of the research. Okay, so the favorite stands or a way to uh, some kind of solution is that um, the researcher are advised to provide thick description of the contextual information for the reader judgment because the reader um, will judge whether the um, whether it is applied in the context or not based on the contextual information you provide. Also, um, connecting different. Uh, environments that means uh, or if different contexts that you should also point out the similarity and differences between the contract you are doing uh, with other con with other contexts okay um, but again the, con the concluding point in our like to make in this video is that when we do qualitative research um, it's all come down to the word contextual or the word contact that means is there a possibility that um, quality finding can be truly transferable without or independent of co contact, its context? For me, it's, it's highly unprobable that will happen that way. Okay, and the third criteria um, that is dependability or reliability. It is closely related to validity or the credibility. The reason is that uh, once you conduct the study in a valid, credible way, then the dependability or its reliability will also be enhanced. So um, when we talk about the reliability, um, it is concerned with whether the research can be replicated, even with different results, but there, there is sufficient information for it to be replicated. So before we, we answer the question, we should be uh, we should be aware with of the developmental nature of a naturalistic phenomenon um, because we do in quality research with uh, natural naturalistic settings 
um, in the phenomenon we are trying to observe or investigate, it is always developing, uh, it's always change either because of its, itself or because of the environmental conditions. So um, the way that we can achieve reliability is, is not to uh, for other researchers to replicate and find the same result, but more is for us, the researcher, to provide a detailed processes um, that you that you employ when you collect the data, so that they can follow um, the similar processes to conduct a similar study. You know, even with different findings. Um, finally, we come to the confirmability that is the objectivity. So objectivity has a lot to do with the researcher bias or predispositions. Um, the way that um, this can be addressed is that um, the researcher need to be honest um, about their beliefs, um, I mean pre-existing belief, um, their selection of uh, instruments and the reflection on the effectiveness of, of their instruments. Also, People always talk about the term audit trial. That means um, the process that you achieve um, something. For example, the process that you achieve the data, the process that you achieve the results of the data analysis. And they, it is, it would be easier for readers and for others to to audit trail your your research by following diagrams. And you can draw a diagram to illustrate the steps that you have taken to achieve the final result. So here are the references that I use for this presentation. And thank you for watching. And I hope that um, this pre this video um, helped you to understand a little bit better about the credibility and other criteria for to ensure the reliability for your quality of research. Thank you.